And now, your host, Couch Tomato! Hey, I'm Couch Tomato and I'm joined by... Oh. Welcome to Stuff for Movie Buffs. And today we're talking... Marvel's The Defenders. All right, perfect. Before we get into any of that, guys, I need everybody out there, put their right hand on their heart, left hand in the air, repeat after me, say I. I. Say your name. Hulk. I'm a movie fan. I'm a movie fan. As a movie fan. As a movie fan. I won't get mad. I won't get mad. I can't get mad. I can't get mad. And I'll keep my anger to myself. And I will keep my anger to myself. All right, perfect. If this is your first time listening to this show, we start off every show like that because I'm a movie geek. Hulk's a a geek as well, and um, sometimes, admittedly, we take movies, and in this case, TV shows, a little too serious, but by saying that, Creed, um, Hulk and I promise to not give you guys the side eye, no matter how absurd your opinions are. Also, make sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, guys, uh, SoundCloud, or wherever you go for your podcast to just make sure that you're getting weekly updates. Um, Before we dive into this, guys, I do want to apologize again. Last week, my sinuses were acting up. This week, I have a... uh, a cold so i got over my sinuses now i have a cold so i, I do oh, apologize man. if i sound stuffy on your end so i just wanted to bring that up before we started so uh this week we we're, we actually got a chance to watch the defenders and i had to break this season up usually i could you know watch i could binge watch uh daredevil um or even luke cage on a weekend with this one i split it up into like three it's it's only eight episodes so i watched two three and then three had to split it up this time so we're going to talk to you about our experience and uh, we're anxious to hear from you guys how you felt as well so just make sure to provide your feedback in the comment section on twitter or on um youtube or uh wherever you can reach us facebook uh especially just just to give us your opinions or if you agree or disagree because i would imagine there's going to be some disconnect between us on um our opinions about the defenders so uh, first thing that we want to talk about, so this is the first time, they kind of set this up similar to the Avengers uh, universe, like the way um, the MCU did it in 2012, to where you've got a chance to know these individual heroes, and now their worlds are colliding in the form of this uh, ensemble type TV series. So uh, it's important that we talk about their chemistry, and was that connection believable between all, the, all of them, Hope? So I'll, I'll let you start off. Like, how did you think the chemistry work between these superheroes in the in the defenders and also which relationships did you admire the most <laughs> like what chemistry wow that's like... pretty negative and i'm not going to be the only one with <laughs> negative opinions on this so i'm with you i guess elaborate now nah, the team like with, with ensemble casts the team has to always complement each other that's what made like um the avengers work so well because you have uh you know cap seriousness you know, and his leadership, his leadership, but you have like um, Iron Man's, uh, you know, wit and banter and uh, and his brain, his brain. Because he, yep, exactly. So it's just like you have all these different dynamics that just works well together, and the the chemistry just seeps out through every scene. Yeah, with the defenders, it's just boring. It's just none of these characters really, I guess, complement each other in a way where it's entertaining, where you can actually like enjoy watching them interact with each other for instance throughout the first three episodes i was just like what the heck am i watching like even oh my first three <laughs> or it took me <laughs> it took me to five and i you know i almost didn't finish this whole like i had three more episodes left and i was like i i'm just gonna guess what happens next and not worry about it yeah it was a struggle and it was really surprising because I was able to finish most of the seasons except for, like, without any problems except for, like, Iron Fist. That was really, like, work for me. Mm-hmm. So it's just, like, I actually like these characters, but together they were just terrible. Like, it was really bad. Like, to me, it took a really a uh, step back for for all of them. And I and I, and I it, it hurt me because I was just, like, I was so hyped for when it was first announced. I wasn't. Like, how... <laughs> remember, I wasn't. And I told you that offline that I just felt like... This is it. It's not. I didn't say it was going to be a train wreck, but I, I I didn't expect it to be as good as people were hailing it to be. So mm-hmm. I I kind of saw this coming from a mile. But I mean, let's let's not be too negative because I was going to be negative. But you know, just like we always say, if you don't have anything nice to say, um, whatever. I I forgot the term now, but um, <laughs> try to add something nice into it. I guess. 
So I, what? Um. Oh, one more thing. This isn't the first time. Th- like, there's not only one team that's joining forces in this because this is the first time that we see the defenders join forces. But this is also also the first time that we see all five fingers of the hand. So this is like the the bad. Uh, evil uh, force that was hinted at during Daredevil season two. Yeah. Well, ba- basically all the shows, um, uh, pr- uh, primarily on Daredevil as well as uh, Iron Fist, it was hinted at a lot. I, I don't remember it too much on uh, Jessica Jones, so I don't I don't know if it was, and um, barely anything talked about it on uh, Luke Cage, but it was there. So. How did you feel about the hands chemistry and just their introduction as like, you know, their five fingers? That's another thing. <laughs> like, I wish they would have went a different route. The hand, they never really created a sense of danger or a sense of like gravitas as far as like villains is concerned. Are you talking about in the defenders or are you talking about period? Period, like the hand, like the hand as a whole. This is where this is where I disagree because I thought that they did a good job on Daredevil season two with the hand. Because remember when they just came into the uh, hospital and wreck shop? Oh yeah, yeah. And it sh- yeah, it showed like, oh, they don't, we don't have any regards for the police. We're bigger, we're bigger than the law. Yeah, we don't die. I thought and all that. I I thought that was fine, but on this, their their reach seems pretty finite to where it's like. No, it, it just seems like you guys are five guys who know how to use swords. Like this isn't, you guys aren't that menacing. And actually you're pretty annoying and just bad actors. And some of them, I couldn't even tell which were, which ones were the five fingers because the characters weren't even established well enough. Like yeah. the the African dude, I, I, I just thought he was a henchman. So definitely agree with you. Like the villain on this one fell flat. And I think that, 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 that helped, you know, the, uh, fall of uh the defenders as well yeah because uh, for instance because they uh, what annoyed me is because i've i've seen them do villains well like kingpin was such a good villain such a great villain oh yeah, yeah you didn't like kingpin no i, I like him but I, I i do think some on season one there were some moments where his acting was pretty bad like it sounded like <laughs> He sound like the guy from uh the kid in the wheelchair <laughs> from malcolm in the middle like where he kept breathing yeah. Like if you watch it, it, it just gets annoying if you pay attention to it. Like he breathes in, breathes out very hard and pauses between the sentences. So Daredevil, yeah. I will come for your family. <laughs> you know, so th- that that's just me. But u- ultimately, like you said, for as far as TV villains go, he was pretty solid. Yeah, like even like again another one, Punisher. Uh, I forget his name. I forgot how to pronounce solid. it. Solid. Just call him Punisher. I yeah, know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Solid. Like, um, and even Kilgrave, like he was bearable. Like I I just thought like his power was just so scary. Like him just being able to, you know, mind control somebody. So I I was looking back at that and I was just like, okay, I'd rather see something like that. Like something from them, not necessarily the hand, which like you said, like the build up wasn't right. Um I didn't really well, that know. build up that build up wasn't right, but it was definitely there. Like I'm they spent like five episodes getting, you know, I don't I don't remember the exact number, but by episode four, the team hasn't even joined forces yeah. yet. So with this, it just seemed like one episode that was just drawn out because it's like that's the thing I liked about Avengers. It's like we didn't have to set up too much stuff because you no, know, you already saw the previous movies. So at the beginning of the movie. You have them meeting different, they, they meet each other at different points. Like Cap links up with, uh, Cap links up with Iron Man and then Thor jumps in, right? And then after that, Black Widow's, Black Widow's driving the plane and then Bruce Banner uh, meets up with Cap and then they're, they're on the boat, you know, so, uh, well, on the, uh, you know, uh, shield uh, vehicle. So it's like, oh, wow, like these guys are, it, it's pretty quick. So that first that first 30, you know, 40, 35 to 40 minutes, Avengers linked up. And in that first hour of the film, hour and a half, th- they're like ironing out their difficulties, mm-hmm. but they're still fighting, you know, like they're still fighting as a team. And then really that last hour is when they fight well together. So with this one, it just seemed like they wait till like episode, they talk for a long time. <laughs> they have yeah. dinner. They even have dinner at one point. That's how uninteresting this is. And then uh, finally... The, I think the last episode, though, 
the way they were battling together. I'm like, all right, that's how they complement each other because their technique is different and everything. So all right, let's not pounce on this show too much. Let's talk about standout characters because there had to be some. I mean, you finished eight episodes and it's not just because we needed to do a podcast. So uh, with standout characters, let's try to be positive during this section. Um, who stood out for you? Okay, I'll try. Um, I'll go with Electra. I thought... Uh... Stay on her. <laughs> I thought Ella D. Young. I thought she did. Um, that's her name, right? Electra. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no, Ella D. Young. I'm trying to her actress name. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't know her real name, but yeah. I thought I'm just. <laughs> I thought she did a pretty decent job as far as like um, some of the like her coffee and all that. A lot of the choreography I wasn't too much of a fan of, but with her scene specifically, like I thought she like she really felt like an assassin, like you know, wielding the sword. Her dialogue eh, left, you know, much to be desired. But as far as like, that's because she she was on that same stuff that Bucky was on in Captain America: <laughs> yeah. Winter Soldier. So it's, I guess she had yeah, to be robotic. But other than but... that, like her, like her whole style, like it was really like okay, like it was really engaging. Like I, I really enjoyed it. She's uh she was actually um, her and Daredevil is a lot of people didn't like Daredevil uh se- season two as much as season one i do think season one is superior but i also think daredevil season two is better than any other marvel netflix original series so that just shows you how much i like that particular show over the other ones so electro was one of the main reasons her and the punisher but i love her as an addition like you said it's the fact that she's so believable as a love interest to matt but she could really get down when it comes to the fighting. Like that's why I'm surprised that she hasn't gotten more jobs in Hollywood when they're always trying to cast out for diversity. Yeah, she's right there, and plus she knows how to do the stuff. Like uh, if you look at her IMDb, she was one of the. Um, <laughs> it wasn't that much decent parts in uh, GI Joe Retaliation, but nah. she was actually okay. So uh, yeah, she was she was up, she was up she, for Wonder Woman. She just lost to um, Gal Gadot. As long as they're paying attention to her, I do think she's a little too short for the role. But uh, yeah, definitely. I, 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 I like her. I'm a fan. So she was uh, my favorite part in the Defenders. Uh, I guess to, to uh, another. All right. I try to be positive. Let me get off this guy. Foggy. He I, I'm a huge Mighty Ducks fan. <laughs> I can't stand yeah, Fulton Reed. And you know, Foggy, right? I just don't. I, I really don't understand. Like, it seems like every season they switch people's logic. Because I never even liked him be- for quitting on, uh, you know, Matt Murdock and his uh, uh, law firm because he hates, apparently he hates people that takes the law into their own hands. But now he's <laughs> making a career out of defending people who take the law into their own hands. I don't get it. I just don't think he's a, a real friend. But he did have like some type of silver lining at the end when he helped out uh, Daredevil. And I won't say how, but I thought that was like a redeeming um, quality for him. So I'm just going to add my little two cents about him. But ultimately, another uh, person that was Daredevil is my favorite character from the Defenders. All right. I'm supposed to be positive. This is going to be negative again. But um, (laughs) I wasn't a fan of him on this. I I just didn't like what they did. Still, even though I wasn't a fan of uh, Matt on this, he was still one of the better characters in the Defenders. Like everybody else is pissing me off. Like Luke Cage. All of the laws that he broke in um, Luke Cage season one, now he has a problem with jaywalking on this. Like it's little laws that yeah. they're breaking where he's like, he has a, he has a difficult conscience. But I guess he got out of jail, so he had a a lot, a lot of time to uh, contemplate his actions. But Jessica Jones and Matt Murdock were the only two that didn't get on my nerves all the time in the series. So, I mean, um, I'm trying to be positive. It's just hard for me to find anything positive. Can you help me out, Hope? Nah, it's hard. Like, <laughs> every time you mention the word positive, it's just like, it's hard. Because I look at my paper, and it's just like, it's just all negative. Like, e- I know you're um, a fan of uh, Misty just as much as I am. That's like my only TV crush right now. <laughs> and um, how did you feel about her? That's the thing. I felt like they didn't really give, they didn't really give none of the side characters enough of a major arc in a way. Which mm-hmm. I didn't expect because you only have eight episodes and then you have, what, four or five heroes? So it's just like, okay, you're not going to yeah. really have time to, like, go through all the ins and outs of side characters. But at the same time, you have to give them certain moments, like uh, like with Coulson and, uh, you know, Avengers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to give them certain moments. Even, like, when, uh, you know, spoiler alert, 
when she, when she lost her, her hand, like I felt bad for her, but at the same time, I didn't have like that emotional impact. Like I didn't want her to die. Don't get me wrong. I kind of felt. I kind of felt like, hey, that's what you get. <laughs> yeah, not listening to these guys. Exactly. exactly. Hey, man, exactly. now you gotta be cute with one arm. Exactly. Good luck with that. Exactly. That's what I felt. Like I was just like, okay. you can't even take your own <laughs> selfie anymore, and it's technically not a selfie if you're not the one taking the picture. Yeah. But um, yeah, but and I agree with you. What about Stick? Oh, Stick was decent. Like he's always. Yeah, I thought he. He's was, always pretty he good. Always yeah. Decent. I mean, that's it, man. I'm not going to force this. Let's talk about weak links. <laughs> I got a section to talk about weak links, and we kind of already talked about them. <laughs> I still got All more. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Pounce on. Uh, Sigourney Weaver, I, I mean, you didn't mention her. In, uh, yes. What a waste. What a waste. Not even it, like, a when, literal waste. Now I understand why <laughs> Netflix is in debt. You don't hire people that demand that much of a billing, right? I'm pretty sure she got paid off this. Oh, yeah. And this, her role could have been occupied by any, you know, B list actor or less. Like, I just, I felt like they bought her in this for publicity. And that's the reason why Netflix is in that financial problem that they're currently in. So, yeah, she was just hyped up way too, way more than she needed to be. Um, I also, well, we already talked about the hand, but when we talk about the weakest link, the weakest link, the weakest link. I, come on. I know you're reading my mind and you know who that is. Exactly. Who? Uh, uh, Danny Rand, Mr. Oh Iron Fist, God. who says his name like every 10 times. <laughs> like, and I be telling I be telling people like when, when that show came out, I'm like, hey, man, this show's not good. It's not good. Like he spends a lot of time reminding you of stuff that he's already talked. I, I've heard his story arc too many times because he keeps yeah. reminding me. I'm like, I saw I saw your show, bro. You don't need to remind me. I'm I'm Danny and my parents were killed when I was little. And and you know what? And I ran away from my training, but the hand. And I'm just like, he says that every episode. That's just so annoying to me. And I'm like, bro, worst show out of the, you know, four shows, worst actor out of the mm-hmm. four actors. And I don't know why the director doesn't notice how unbelievably he sounds during the editing process. Somebody has to pick up on that. Yeah, I don't I don't understand that. It's just you there's certain things like you just can't ignore or you can't really hide in a way. But at the same time, like you mm-hmm. have to address it. Like I just like to me that'll be something so glaring in the editing room, like, okay, we gotta cut the scene a little bit. We gotta change his dialogue yeah, just cut. too much. Like he's been you know what I'm saying? Just little things like that. Like I like I'm surprised, like they actually let some of these things, um, you know, air. Like it's just so bland and um, boring. Bro, I'm not excited about some of this stuff to come. Uh, but uh, let's talk. Let's rank these series, and this will tell you how we feel about them. So, uh, for, uh first up, and, and by series, I mean we're gonna rank uh, Iron Fist, Defenders, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and uh, Daredevil. Yeah. So really, the goal here is to see where Defenders it, uh ranks on that totem pole. So let's let's dive into it. What's what's number one? To me, it's easy. It's Daredevil, like hands down. I think so too. I think Daredevil, and we're not breaking this up by seasons. We're just breaking this up by TV shows. Strongest character, best villains, mm-hmm. yep. plural, and um, best acting. You right? So what's number two? This is where we're probably gonna start disagreeing. Yeah, this is close. This is tough for me. I'm gonna go with Luke Cage, just because like I was really engaged with, like the style of it, like how uh mm-hmm. they really made Harlem like a character. Yep. And like, I don't know. I just really enjoyed it. Um, so I'll go with Luke Cage's number two. You stepping into the light because I said that as well. I said uh, some some of the worst acting by <laughs> yeah, far yeah, though. Yeah. And it, 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 some, uh, but the story itself is interesting enough. And some of the wor- the bad acting, I don't think it's done intentional, but it it reminds me of uh, black exploitation films. Mm-hmm. So for that show, it fits. Like, you know, the one thing you know, sweet Christmas, sweet sister, sweet, sweet sister. Nobody from Harlem talks like that. But um, definitely, I, I do agree with you that it's number two. Number three, Jessica Jones, like uh, Kristen Ritter, like she's so, like she's entertaining. Like I just love like how she delivers. Cause even like um, I forgot she had this joke when um, like I, this is not from the show, but this is from like uh, not from her show, but from the Defenders, where she was just like, uh, touch me like that again, I'm gonna punch you. It's, I forgot, I'm, I'm butchering it, but basically she she had a yeah, yeah. <laughs> she she's good like Kristen Ritter, 
Like she's she really made Jessica Jones like enjoyable. Like I could go through each episode dealing with her. So she was definitely number three. I wouldn't say that. I actually Jessica Jones is actually one of my um if it wasn't for I, I can't give away my list too much, but I wasn't a fan of Jessica Jones. I think I think good actress, but I also think those fight scenes are not good at all. So and uh when you watch a comic book movie, there has to be some type of action, right? And I just felt her action scenes felt very, very like I told you, my problem with the X-Men franchise is they do the thong song, uh, you know, uh, the thong song fight scenes. And what that is, is similar to the thong song video. They tie you up on a rope and then they just make the uh, the flying type effects really <laughs> unbelievable. And they used a lot of that. And I just don't I think that worked in the late 90s, early 2000s. But nowadays it just looks very cheesy. But uh, best actor and probably the best act. Uh, no, second best acting out of the whole entire franchise but uh for number three i'm actually going with something different and i'm pretty sure me and your three your three and four are switched around with my three and four so my three is actually the defenders by default because the other series are just not interesting to me but um i got defenders is number three and that's not saying much that's just i that just shows you how much i feel about jessica jones and iron fist excuse me and iron fist but um, will I be watching uh, uh, Defenders? The pr- the problem with Defenders is it's like you have to watch it. Yeah. 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 Like, I don't think that you need to watch the standalone projects to understand Defenders. Like if you just want to watch Daredevil, you don't have to keep up with Danny anymore. You could just watch the Defenders. But I do feel like the Defenders is going to bleed into what they're doing with these future uh, seasons of both uh well of all of uh daredevil all of uh luke cage all of jessica jones and iron fist so it's eight episodes i really don't want to stomach a season two but i think i'm gonna have to so let me let me hear your number four just to make sure that we're aligned oh yeah number four is like we switched it like mine is uh defenders like uh yeah like you said um i just feel like they just wasted like half the season like literally even more than that it was just like three up i want to say i want to say they wasted but this seems like they shot this in a day yeah like none of the episode like i I was binge watching it and none of them felt different you know what i'm saying like i can't like even looking back on it thinking back on it like i can't really point to different episodes like they're all just like a blur they're merged together because you know all of it takes place in it it's like okay luke cage got arrested you know, Luke Cage gets out of jail. He gets back on the street. And then he meets up with these guys and they have to blow up a building. All of this takes place in like less than four, three or four days. So it's like, okay. And I'm I'm okay with certain events not taking as much time because there's epic movies. It takes, it takes place in a span of a day or so. Yeah, or a night. But, yeah. Yeah, but with this, I felt like since they were trying so hard to build up this world, they should have at least allowed some days to progress. But w- just looking at the production of it, I'm like, oh, they rushed this. They rushed yeah. this. Oh, Netflix. Netflix must have just, you know, told them, hey, you need to have this to market tomorrow. Like so, And you see it in the writing. You see it in the development of these characters. A lot of people like, you know, for me, I'm coming to see Misty. That's who I care about. And, you know, like she didn't have no nope. type of uh, Nothing. screen time. So I, yeah, I I agree with you like on that one. Um, so I, I don't know. It looks like we left one off the list. What's the worst one? What's the worst? <laughs> That's easy. I, Iron Fist. Oh my and god! It's like cancel that. And it garbage. carries over. It carries it, it to me. That really hurt the defenders as well because it was the last one leading into it, and you could just like it just didn't have that momentum geared to it. So it's like whenever they mention reference from that show or anything from it, it's just oh. And then not to mention the character is just so boring so i'm glad people see the light now because when iron fist first came out a lot of people were defending it oh yeah and now when the defenders came out a lot of people realize this guy can't he he can't act and it's like i don't know if it's him i think it may be his direction because he was bearable on um, game of thrones yeah but yeah so I, i think it's mainly his direction but a lot of people have you know joined forces and collaborated to kind of like with pitch pitchforks to say, oh my God, we hate Iron Fist. So I mean, that's that's where we stand. So I mean, any other um, silver lining like you want to do to recommend this show to anyone else? Uh, um, not really. I can't. I can't. Like I Wrong really that, didn't huh? enjoy it. Like Wrong even like that. the fight choreography. For instance, 
Like, you remember how, like, uh, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, they're supposed to be, like, basically indestructible. You know, moving cars, you know, throwing stuff, picking up bricks, like, mm-hmm. massive buildings, all this crap. Bringing out buildings, all that stuff. But yet they're struggling with Elektra. Yep. Or they're getting, like, yep. it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't get it. I, I, I don't get it. None of their powers make sense. I mean, so the Iron Fist is equivalent to yeah Luke Cage's skin yeah. sometimes, but then sometimes it's not. And then Jessica Joe, I'm like, come on. And it's sometimes you could you could knock a building down with a fist, but then you struggle to I don't know, some, yeah. like he struggled to open up the secret door and it was made out of <laughs> aluminum. So and I'm like, I don't really understand your powers anymore, Luke Cage. Just whatever. Just hurry up and bring those uh those special bullets back because I don't mind if you like bite the bullet next time but yeah like do something like that like weaken them so then I could get the concept but it's just like I just kept getting lost like I'm just uh because nah. it's like if he if he could punch through a wall like just imagine if he punches somebody else like wouldn't that person just automatically die I, like you keep saying he was struggling with Electra he was struggling with some of these henchmen <laughs> that too yeah and, and I'm like what something nah you tripping right now but and then all of that, and then finally this one girl gets, I don't know, they tried Misty with that sword thing. Because a lot of people was getting hurt worse than that. But they ch- cl- chopped the ch- clean off. So that sucks. But I knew she was going to eventually have that metal arm. Like, um, when she got shot in the arm, in that same arm, in Luke Cage. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought that's what they were going to do. I thought they were going to have to, oh, they're going to have to amputate her arm now. And then I'm like, okay, they they letting her keep her arm. I guess you know, my, 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 uh, you know, like android arms won't work in this franchise or something. But it's nice to see that they're sticking to the source material. Uh, so that's silver lining for season two of Luke Cage. Yeah. But I'm anxious to hear what you guys think, man. Hurry up and uh, get out there and uh, let us know what you think in the comment sections. Tweet us or uh, Facebook comment sections as well to let us know if you agree or disagree. Rank these shows and let us know what you think. So. Um, all in all guys it's about that time I want to thank you guys for joining us today uh, before you leave if you like what you heard share it with a friend on Apple Podcasts or SoundCloud or wherever you go for your podcast don't let this be the last time we hear from you or you hear from us uh, support the show by giving us a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts guys it would really mean a lot also join us next week and check out the show notes on where you can find us weekly it's Couch Tomato Films on YouTube Facebook and Instagram and Couch Tomato Film on Twitter other than that peace peace